You were more along the lines of Mr. I'm, Jackson. I'm a well-known Tesla skeptic, and it's... But it keeps defying expectations. Well, you have to give it that. Somehow, it's levitating, and I think it's Elon Musk is the greatest salesman in the world. He paints this vision of an unlimited future uh, aided and abetted by some analysts who say, oh. I mean, it's just like... He, it's like Elon Musk has been beamed down from another planet <laughs> to show us mortals how to run a, how to run a company. <laughs> the fact is, uh, it's a constant cash drain. They're highly dependent on federal government and state incentives for money, which constantly flows in. They have capital raises all the time. The uh, even the high-end cars that they build now cost more to build than they're able to sell them for. Mercedes, BMW, Volkswagen, GM, Audi, and Porsche are all coming out with 300-mile electric luxury sedans. I think they're doomed. I, I, unless somehow the laws of you have to have more money coming in than going out. Unless they're a somebody, startup, though. What, they're not what a does startup. doomed mean? They're startup. They're, they're their stock price comes in, years. they go out of business, they have, they have regular competition like other companies. What do you mean by doomed? What the, so at some point, see, their, their upside on pricing is limited because everybody else sells electric vehicles at a loss to get the credits to be able to sell the sport utilities in the pickup truck. So that puts a ceiling on your possible pricing. And if he can't make money on the high-end Model S's and Model X's, which sell, you know, up, up to 100000 bucks, how in the world is he going to make money on a $35,000 small car because I have news for you, you know, 42 <laughs> years of experience. The cost of a car doesn't come down proportional to right. its No, no, that's so, true. But so, if you... Bob Nardelli, do you see any possible way that this works out for Tesla? Keeping in mind that they're not just about cars now. They changed their name from Tesla Motors to Tesla. They've got these in-home batteries. They've got solar panels on the roofs now, yeah. buying Solar City. I mean, sometimes the stock price and the fundamentals end up coming in line. Yeah. Well, first of all, it's an honor to be on set with all of you, but more importantly, <laughs> an icon in the auto industry, yes. my good friend Bob Lutz here. So, so listen, I, I would take, uh, let me take the other side of that comment that uh, Michael Jackson made. I, I don't think this is a Ponzi scheme. Here's what, I, here's what I do think. I do think Mary Bauer and General Motors is woefully underrated relative to the performance and what she's brought to this industry. She took a hard line on quality. You know, she stood tall and has raised the bar for the auto industry back to the consumer, consumer warranty with the ignition key and so forth. She is continuing to drive the reliability, the durability of the GM fleet. And, and of course, Bob had set the tone over there relative to design and, and aspirational gratification for the consumer. So I think more than focusing on Tesla, I would say GM is woefully underrated. I think General Motors, Mary gets, it, it should get a lot more credit than, than she's getting today. And, and I think Bob makes an interesting point. Uh, if you think about what President Trump is doing with CAFE standards, I'm not sure the electric vehicle is going to give you the offsets that no longer will be required as a result of this phenomenal demand for SUVs and trucks. Remember, the highest margin. If you look at Fiat Chrysler, 90% of the operating profits come from Jeep and the Ram truck. On Tesla, I just want to get back to you on this. In terms of cash burn, yes, they're burning a lot of cash, but they're in startup mode, and the trajectory at which they burn cash theoretically won't be the same. They won't have to continue building a gigafactory infinitum. They won't add on new production lines. In terms of subsidies, most of the people who reserve a Model 3 are doing that without any government subsidies because they run out and they're still willing to buy that car. We'll see. I mean, we'll see. Uh, we'll see. But uh, if you have a situation where the cost of producing a car, labor and materials, is higher than your sell price, your business model is flawed and it's 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 doomed and it's going to fail. And I will guarantee the only difference, the, the reason for this inflated stock, because Elon Musk said, oh, but look at my solar, look at Solar City, look at the panels, look at the battery plant. The battery plant, in my estimation, is a joke. There, is, there are no cost savings by making a lithium ion plant bigger than other people's lithium ion plants because making lithium ion cells is a fully automated process anyway. So 
whether you've got full automation in a small building or 10 times full automation in a big building, you're not saving any money. And yeah. Solar City, we know, is a disaster. So what, to answer Bob Nardelli, what GM should do, GM should say, we're not gonna, we're not gonna colonize Mars because that would be copying Tesla. We're going directly for Neptune and Saturn. <laughs> Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.